Do you like pirates? Do you like dinosaurs? What about taking over the world with pirate dinosaurs? Or ninja robots? Well, that's exactly what you get to do in today's game, Smash Up. Number 64 on Mike Selenka's list of 100 games you absolutely, positively must know how to play. Published in 2012 by AEG, Smash Up was designed by Paul Peterson, who also created the game Guillotine, as well as working on some pretty cool enterprises like, I don't know, Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon. He's been in the industry for about 20 years doing some pretty cool things. Smash Up plays one to four players in about 45 minutes. Let's check out how it's played. The game is comprised of cards, both action and minion cards and base cards. Action and minion cards will each have an effect and some impact on the game. Some will have one-time effects, others may have ongoing effects and that are active outside of the player's turn. Each minion card has a power strength name and effect and a faction symbol. Players select two 20 card decks comprised of action cards and minions and shuffles them together to make their player deck. Players start by dealing out a base for each player plus one. Each base has their name, their breaking point and the victory points for the top three positions. Some bases will have an additional effect that impact gameplay. Players start the game by drawing five cards and are allowed one mulligan should they have no minions. The players may play one action and place one minion on a base from their hand in any order. Actions and minion effects may change the number of minions and actions that can be played in a turn. As minions are placed on bases, their power levels accumulate collectively, and when the combined power level of minions equals or exceeds that of the base, the base is destroyed, and the scores are allocated to first, second, and third. These positions are determined by totaling the power level of players' minions with the first position going to the highest total and so forth. Players finish their turn by drawing two cards. The first player to 15 victory points wins the game. The game has obviously done pretty well for itself considering the sheer number of expansions it's received, as well as the reprints, the cross-promotional work done with other intellectual properties such as, I don't know, Munchkin, uh, Tabletop with Will Wheaton. Geek and Sundry, it's been doing really well. When it comes to the mechanics, Peterson refers to this game as a shuffle builder, as opposed to a deck builder. You don't necessarily select each individual card that goes into the deck, instead you take a ready-made deck and, well, smash it together with another ready-made deck to create your overall playing deck. Now, this is going to highlight some obvious problems. Firstly, these decks, regardless of which two you grab, need to work together. Now, when thinking about the mechanics of this game, Peterson refers to it as a shuffle builder, as opposed to a deck builder. In deck building, you tend to be choosing which cards you're going to be placing into your deck one by one, valuing each card or purchasing cards. With this game, you simply take two ready-made decks, smash them together, and get playing. Now, I don't have wonder if Peterson got his idea for shuffle building from Magic the Gathering itself. I mean, there are different ways to draft cards, but one of the ways you can begin or get into the game is through ready-made decks, or starter decks as they're usually called. This essentially takes what are half-built starter decks and gives you the option to add your own flavour or to go with your own fanfare. For me personally, the way I prefer to play Smash Up is we don't actually choose who gets what. You go randomly and you live with the luck of the draw and I think that just adds a little bit to the randomness as well as to uh, the overall expectation of the game. Now the logistics of pulling this sort of mechanic together is almost self-evident. The idea of two half-made decks being able to come together to create a whole for a ex gameplay experience raises the challenge of, well, can two half-made decks make a whole? Will they play well together? Will they work well together? Will it create overpowered decks or underpowered decks? These logistics have really thoroughly been thought through by Peterson and his team. It seems to me that this game has obviously been played tested the heck out of it for the decks to work so smoothly. If anything, it highlights the ability of Peterson to think through the balancing of these cards with powers and effects 
action cards and minions. I think there's a certain attempt at simplicity here by not overwhelming the player with lots of different things to read. The abilities and the powers of the cards are quite complex enough and add to the complexity and the depth of the game nicely. What you don't have is cumbersome mechanics, although with each expansion, they're starting to add some new things, but nothing so overwhelming that it becomes incredibly difficult to play. Each expansion is just a minor step along the way into a richer and fuller experience of the game. Now to get that balance right, Peterson's had to work really hard on the card text, and it's become an essential element of this shuffle builder. The idea of having cards that work well together regardless of which factions you choose, as well as not coming up with any problems that overrule or impede with the, rule, the, the base rules themselves is a real challenge and it's something that CCGs and LCCs don't, get a ch don't really do well. There's often cards that need to get banned or restricted because they become overpowered. Uh, there's cards that need rule clarifications and erratas and that's part of the, the deal of those bigger, more immense sort of uh, competitive play cards. But Peterson's still producing a lot here, and, and they're very consistent at making sure that these decks work, they work well, the language is consistent, and they're very precise about what they mean. In fact, part of their job has been teaching the audience what these terms mean and how to use them effectively in the game. And I think when it comes to writing rules, when designing a game, though that what he's done there is just masterful work. I think he's done a really great job and I think he deserves high praise for achieving that at such an expert level. Now that's not to say there hasn't been drawbacks. The game's still a turn-based game. There's not a lot of interaction between players outside of your turn, except when you've got minions or actions with ongoing abilities. More recent expansions have started to introduce characters or actions that can be played out of turn, but it's not a great number and it's only a recent development. Now as the game has developed and some decks have come out that have tried to push the game a little bit beyond the simple mechanics, there have been some balance issues. I've encountered only one time in which I had a deck which was significantly underpowered compared to other people playing. However, I think one time out of all the times I've played this game is still pretty high praise for Peterson. Now it should be noted that shuffle building isn't the only mechanic going on here. With each base being attacked or fought over by different factions, you start to begin to get this sense of area control being played out. Uh, it's competitive, it's combative, and it can get a bit mean at times. And it's really hard sometimes to make the choice as to whether you go for the base on your own, which means you're trying to spend a lot of minions to, to score that base and sometimes people still manage to steal a few victory points off of all of your effort, or whether you try and stop your opponent by going onto their base and compete and limit the amount of points they can get as well as forcing them to expel, spend more resources. So that area control part of the game is still a light part of the game. It's not a heavy or, or hugely in-depth component, but it adds just that little bit extra choice, that little bit extra uh, decision making going on and I, I love area control so naturally it's a fit for me. Now I think the one thing that should be mentioned about this game is the artwork which clearly just brings together the sense of what the game is about. Horrible pirates and zombies being mixed together with cute cuddly pussy cats and it's all in good spirits. I think the artwork is just a treat and it's certainly something that I think has got to be mentioned about this game. Now Peterson's expertise in creating these cards and looking for balance through the deck play has clearly both come, been informed by his time with Magic, Pokemon and those other games as well as informing uh, the expert play in which he's brought into such games as Pathfinder and Apocrypha. Now, I have no trouble believing that Peterson's expertise in writing the cards and finding balance and thinking through the language of the game and coming up with brilliant rules has both been informed by his time at Magic as well as being part of what helped shape his contribution to Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game and Apocrypha for that matter. Now I think the concept of shuffle building is unique enough to warrant being on Mike's list. However, I think if I was to take something away as a designer, the one thing I would look at is developing a vocabulary. Really trimming back what I say so that my interplay with the game 
within the rules, doesn't contradict each other, really thinking through that experience from not just the designer's perspective, but from a player's perspective. Being able to understand that when I play something and I use a particular term, that that term will always be consistent both on the card text, in the rules, and with the players themselves. That they will be able to develop the language and the lingo, which will help them with making decisions in-game, as well as helping a smooth transition into more expert play. Now, as someone who was a competitive card game player, I feel this is a nice step out of that industry into something far more relaxed. It's not as competitive, for sure. It's smoother, it's simpler, and yet at the same time, it has that thing that I really love about competitive card games. Combos. Getting cards to interact with each other, finding new ways of using them, thinking on the spot to outplay my opponent. I love that. I <laughs> love it. Well, Smash Up is a game I could highly recommend for anyone, both from a design perspective and from a casual player perspective. It's got a lot of depth as well as being fun and lighthearted, and it's certainly worth a try, if not worth getting for your own collection. I'd love to hear your comments below about whether you've got a favourite expansion or a favourite combo that you like to put together, or even that you've got a game like Smash Up that you could highly recommend. I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Dave Adams, and you're watching The Core Mechanic. Thanks for watching, we'd love to hear from you. What are some of your favourite Smash Up character decks?